We can head over through the yard and give these to the sheep. And then that's going to be the sheep. Well, it should be the sheep nicely fed. I don't think it will take them up to their maximum. Both of those should go in. I'm just going to move it into place. And that should take our sheep. Yeah, almost full feed. Perfect. Hello and welcome along and welcome back to the Old Stream Farm. We have quite a bit to do on the farm today. We're going to be getting one final cut of grass off of our uh, meadow field before we go and convert it to our third set of grapes on here. We're going to have plenty of hay to feed the sheep after that point. And then speaking of uh, hay and sheep, our sheep need to be fed. So we've got to feed them and sort them today. We've also got to sort our chickens today as well. And then finally, having cut this field and... Oh, there we go. Uh, cut this field and turned uh, the grass that we've got on here to hay. Uh, we're going to need to get it baled uh, and collected. And then our brand new set of grapevines planted as well. So, as I said, busy old day, lots to do. So, uh, let's get to it. Now, doing a full cut uh bale and a uh, be ted bale and then roll on this field should mean that when we plant the grapevines in here this field is fully fertilized and ready um should mean we don't need to do anything to the grapevines other than uh just harvest them later in the year our other grapevines though and next game day we're going to have to get those uh, uh mulched uh, and cultivated uh, we need to do but that between all of our grapevines from last year and then yeah as we go into the summer we're going to need to give them a spray of uh, fertilizer as well so we've we've got that to do to all of our grapevines at the moment uh, i actually cut a section in the middle here or through the middle there, just so that I could divide the field a little bit, make the long bit uh, a little bit easier to do, and uh, and keep things nice and square. Also to give me a good idea of uh, how we would uh, we would work grapevines on here and where we'd place them. I think this is going to be a fantastic field for this, uh, mainly because we do have that nice long strip. Uh, that we've got going down here. My biggest worry is that we're not going to have enough money to plant the vines. But as I've said, if it's a case of having to borrow the money to get the vines in, we'll we'll do that. We've got a little bit of space, I think, in our loam to do it. And, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to borrow enough to get this field finished. Uh, we're going to priority prioritize this long part of the field first. And get that done. And uh, and and go from there. And then if we need to, uh, we've got the extra little bit of the field there uh, to do as well. Uh, it might be that we leave that little bit of field so that we can cut it for grass for the sheep. Um, but to be perfectly honest, we have so much uh, hay now that we, we just have no need for it. Uh, the other thing we might do is sell the pig barn. We know we can get 20 odd thousand from selling the pig barn and we don't need it and uh, and could probably do with making that space in the middle of our yard anyway um and eventually i'd like to put a new large barn in uh, which would be uh, which would be useful so yeah we're, we're gonna go from there and, and see how much we need uh, i'm hoping it's not going to be too much to get this field done though as for all the work I said we need to do with the animals today, I think it's probably going to be a case of uh, getting as far as we can with the grass and then if we need to next game day, catching up and getting the work done with the animals. My reason for that thinking is it's much more important for us to get the vines in today uh, so that the grapes can be cut earlier uh, or, or can be harvested earlier sorry than uh to hold off uh because we need to get the animals done 
looking in here you can see our chickens have enough feed for the next day so they should be all right uh and our sheep also do as well sheep should be fairly easy we probably go and put some hay straight from this field uh into their pen to get them fed the thing with the chickens is we are gonna have to buy feed for them uh, we desperately need to get a contract this year where we can get some grain in for the chickens because yeah we without planting it ourselves we are having a huge amount of cost uh, just keeping the chickens going and keeping that feed going uh, something a lot of people have suggested to me uh, last time was that we should try and get the spinnery and the clothes factory and i actually really agree with that i think long term uh, it's going to be better to keep hold of the sheep. They're producing quite a lot of wool at the moment. So we, we've got the wool. And uh, and to try and get the spinnery and, uh, and, and try and get some textiles created. Textiles are worth a lot of money. And it's really, really going to be worth getting that job done. And, uh, and, getting, uh, and getting that stuff to be done for us and, and get clothes out of there so that's going to be my uh, my plan i think as far as the sheep goes hold on to the wool uh, get it into the spinnery uh, that hopefully we can buy and to get the production running on that so that we can make the maximum amount of money from that and we might try and fund that uh by doing some grass contracts because quite honestly uh, we could do with getting the hay from that and uh, and then uh, from any of those or just selling the excess silage from those contracts. We've seen previously taking on three of those contracts, selling the excess silage is worth a fortune to us. So I think we might try and get something to transport silage bales and also uh, to wrap silage bales and use our own equipment and just make even more money from that going forwards. I've actually got quite efficient at doing this field. It is coming up on 10 o'clock and we've almost got everything tethered. We've got just one long row left to do on here and then we've got four short rows there. So uh, this will get the whole field done. The, vis the rear visibility on here is not great. And it's uh, it's been said many times before that the rear visibility on this tractor isn't great. And I do agree with that. It's, it's not the easiest tractor to see what you're doing outside. I think, or out the back, I think it's very useful for uh, doing stuff at the front and, and sort of uh, works with the, with the grape... Um, uh, with the defoliator and things like that. But yeah, I cannot see while in cab anything that's going on behind this tractor, really. I can see to hook up to stuff, to uh, back up and hook up to stuff. Whoa, go through the hedge. Um, but not to actually uh, easily see the edge. Oh, I suppose I can. There is a support in the way, but it's, it's not great. Uh, if I put the nose of the tractor straight down between two rows of this... So uh, it works well. Uh, now, the only downside we've got to... Well, I'd, uh, yeah, we got really, as I say, we got really efficient doing this. And the downside to turning this field into uh, another set of vines is that, that it is a nice uh, rectangular field. We are able to turn it around quite quickly. Fold that up now. And, uh, and as a result, we can always get a, a good, quick load of uh, hay off it. But on the other hand, uh, we're then in a position where we, we, we're giving up a really good uh, vineyard field for it. So we might be able to sell a few items. I don't think we're going to need the roller anymore until we get another grass field. Uh, we are not, we don't need this, this cedar we've had kicking around for a while. We can probably get rid of that as well. 
Yeah, so how much are those worth? I don't think either of those are worth very much. Let's have a look in here. So cedars. Uh, our cedar is only worth about 5,000. And our roller, our grass and care roller is... Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's it's not a huge amount of money we'd make from either of those. Although, obviously, repainting and restoring them would give us a bit more cash. Let's get the wind rower up. I'm not sure about doing some of those large grass contracts with uh, just this equipment. I think that'd be quite a big task, considering what we've had before. Let's just have a look at the size of those grass fields that we've done contracts for before. Yeah, look at this. So that is the size of that field. That is the size of the contract grass field. That's quite a big field to do with uh with this stuff although as i said we've gone round fairly quickly with this uh it really would be a case of how quickly can we uh get this all turned round so we're gonna go around the field twice once round clockwise once round counterclockwise uh to create a nice uh pile around the edge and then we can uh, start getting some rows rowed up uh, down the field after that uh, hopefully should work out quite well for us this field is actually a really good example of us getting our timings right we have managed to get uh, this cut in october at the end of last year and as a result we ended up with uh, getting this uh, April cut in because it grew a bit in November and uh, and was therefore uh, able to grow enough to get a mid-April cut uh, by the uh, by the time spring kicked in and you can see from the very large rows of uh, hay we're getting off here that this is a really good yield. This is going to produce an absolutely cracking uh, amount of bales for us here and uh, and as i said keep us going with the sheep for a while we have not had to refill the feed on the sheep since we got them uh we have just been stacking up hay bales ever since and uh yeah as a result we are now uh with a good amount of hay on here now the thing i i do want to remember from this is that we haven't made any money from the sheep but the sheep aren't costing us any money either. And so getting into the spinnery and sorting that will actually be quite good for us. We can buy a spinnery and put it in the yard. And actually, this is one of the things I was looking at is we've got both space uh, in the yard to put both a spinnery and our own grape factory. So I'm very tempted to sort of self-contain everything in, the, uh, in our yard and do it that way. So uh, we'll have to see how it goes, but I think uh, we're, we we may end up having a more self-contained yard. Or alternatively, there's space out here, I think, to put another field in and, uh, and maybe get a grass field inside the yard a bit. So uh, I'm going to have a look at that as well and, and see how much of an option that is. But all in all, I think we're uh, we're sitting fairly pretty here. And hopefully we're going to make the most of the space we've got. Because if we do that, we are going to make a lot of money. Just a couple more rows and we'll be finished up. And we're coming up to one in the afternoon. So I'd take a little bit longer to row this up than I'd liked. But uh, we still uh, are well within the time. Uh, as I said, I think I might... My, my, ambition for today was to try and sort the animals out as well i don't think we're gonna be doing that i i, I think we might get the uh, sheep fed uh i we've we're playing around with hay anyway so uh, that shouldn't be too difficult but feeding the chickens is gonna be much harder because we are gonna have to buy uh wheat for that and i kind of want to get the money that we've got here uh into getting uh the grapevines in so yeah we'll probably end up as i said selling the pig pen we've not used it since we started here and uh, and as a result it isn't of much use to us at all and let's just drop this off 
And yeah, I think we've got a couple of excess pieces of machinery we can get rid of. Uh, I don't think either of them are useful for contracts. The roller definitely isn't. Um, and the uh, and the cedar. The cedar allows us when we buy a field to do stuff. But to be honest, we're probably better off borrowing something uh, at that point to do those. Or, or trying to buy a... Well, yeah. There's, uh, we, we'd need more than just a cedar, I think, to sort a, a field out. Right. Down with our baler. And away we go. And yeah, this baler works pretty well on this tractor. In fact, I think I'm going to check the pickup settings for this baler. And see if I can apply them to that New Holland case pack. So that we can get that baler working on no man's land as well. We've got our baler attached to the back now. And we are emptying out bales. I can't even see how uh, how far we've got on the actual emptying of the bale. But uh, we are producing bales at a good rate. We've had three off this headland. And uh, yeah, that's that's great. That's, that's enough to feed the uh, sheep for a little while straight off the bat. Uh, this baler does work fairly well with this tractor. But, uh, yeah, it is a bit big. And sometimes reversing it is a little bit of fun. Especially with the lack of visibility in this tractor. Uh, otherwise, it's just working well. We're getting about a bale a row off here, which is a really good yield. Four and a half thousand litres per row. Or more than four and a half thousand litres per row. Because we are getting... Uh, yeah, we're getting most of the way through a row before we have to unload. And yeah, there we go. There's another four and a half thousand litres, which is just brilliant. I mean, that is just utterly fantastic. So we might end up with two bales out of this row because of how quickly we've turned and then uh, unloaded. Although I think this row is a little bit thinner than some of the others, so I'm not expecting quite so much in it uh but this is brilliant this is a really nice amount of bales that are going to keep us going for a good long while as i said one of the first things we'll probably do is uh use our little tele truck to take a couple of bales straight over to our sheep and get them done uh but yeah there was definitely less in that row uh but we're, we're going to have... Well, we've got a good amount of, uh, of hay to keep our sheep going for a while on the farm. Uh, which is good news because that means that turning this field to doing grapes is not going to harm us elsewhere on the farm. And uh, will just end up making us more money. Right, I think that is all of the hay collected up off the field. We've got a just under half a bale left in our baler so we'll park that up in here we don't need to worry about yeah we don't need to worry about leaving storage space over here this time and i think next time what i'm going to be concentrating on is a getting our chickens fed uh b getting between our existing vines mulched and cultivated i think that's going to be very important so what i'm going to do now is grab our big flatbed trailer on this and get that down to the field and then what we can do is get all of these bales collected up and uh yeah get the uh get the sheep fed as well which will be a very good use of our day how are we doing on lettuce oh wow we're soon going to be able to sell some more lettuce that's brilliant and our grapevines are regrowing which is also great so yeah mulching and cultivating between those uh, is going to be very very important in the near future i love this little teletruck it's really nimble and stable and easy to use and for a job like this where we're just on a on a field just off to the side of our farm it's perfect we can transport it about to, to move pallets uh, on trailer, which works really well as well. 
just just works brilliantly for everything that I'm uh, I'm trying to do on here. And on, on a farm of small equipment, because this is very much a farm of small equipment, uh, it really stands out as just being such a, a fantastic little piece of kit. I mean, look at this. We can easily line things up. Get uh, get everything really nice. The little uh, the skid steer tool with the the middle spike just helps get our positioning for our bales absolutely perfect. And uh, and yeah, and then they just slot on, and away we go. Although that's at a different height, so we want to bring that out. So yeah, we can just put that down onto the ground in, and we got two perfectly positioned bales. I absolutely love that about this. And what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to put single bales on the back. Actually, no, I've got a better idea. We're going to get these onto here. Not going to take very long to get these eight bales off this trailer. Although, that is going to be fun because, actually, I think we're going to have to disconnect and reconnect. Yeah, and then that one will glide off. And when that has dropped... And just put that on and then hopefully just slide that one back in carefully should have locked them okay that's probably gonna make that one fall off the other side no oh no come on don't do this to me after talking about how wonderful this is yeah there we go right so we'll lock those two on like that and hopefully then I can just push these two back on at the other side before that one falls off yeah, sometimes it's a lot of fun trying to get all these things to line up but there we go Ooh. it can be a little bit uh, heart pounding when you think something's going to fall off. Right. There we go. And then we'll leave that here for the moment. I'm just going to take these last two bales. And we're going to go and give them to the sheep. And get the sheep uh, done. And happy. Right, one there. And we don't need to be so accurate with picking these two up. Just as long as we are nicely on spikes. And then we can head over through the yard and give these to the sheep. And then that's going to be the sheep. Well, it should be the sheep nicely fed. I don't think it will take them up to their maximum. But they uh, they should at least be happy. And we can check on the wool level as well at the same time. I think about this little telly truck because it doesn't go more than 12 miles an hour. Yeah, look at that got another part so we're almost full of wool in here we're gonna have to come in and uh, take that out and get that stored but it's a large amount of wool we've got in here now which is brilliant right both of those should go in wow that's still 4,000 liters how much did our sheep take yeah so that is too far over so what we need to do is just pick that up I'm just going to move it into place. And that should fairly quickly disappear as well. Uh, and that should take our sheep. Yeah, almost full feed. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted from that. So let's get that done. And then I'm going to get this over the yard over here. And get these bales off this trailer. Uh, and then we've just got to roll the field and plant our grapevines. There's a reason I normally put the discovery on this trailer. And that's because this is being weighed down a lot at the back and isn't overly happy. Yeah, not not normally my setup for this. Somebody did suggest uh, that on here, a great tractor for a vineyard is, so is something like... Uh, is it in the small tractor? I think it might be. Uh, yeah, this. The G-Series Voltra. 
84,000 pounds for 110 horsepower uh, would be great on our baler and everything else. Main color, we can put it in lots of different ones. And uh, yeah, it would be quite a good tractor for this. Active Versu. I don't know what the difference between those two is. Front loader, uh, we can go up to 145 horsepower on that. So that would be quite a useful little tractor going forwards, maybe. Uh, considering how much we uh, are doing some of the bigger stuff. And especially if we went out and did uh, bigger fields and, and maybe wanted to put a front a front mower on and, uh, and get a... a, a a transport trailer uh, that might work quite well let's bring this down and get that in there right yeah let's get all of these unloaded and uh, then we can go and get the field rolled and finally get our grapevines in because yeah that is our ultimate target for today Hills are all unloaded and we just need to put the trailer back in the shed. I think it's getting fairly late in the day. We've got snow on the way again. I, oh, I really want to get these vines in. We are running. Yeah, we are running very late on the day. I think what we'll do is we'll get this rolled and we'll see what the time is after having rolled this because we want to get... Uh, full fertilization set up on this field uh, before we put the grapevines in at the same time i am very aware that it's very late in the day and uh we really uh, we want to wrap things up in a, a timely manner really then we're gonna have to look at getting a fuel tank and, well, we're going to need a methane uh, fuel station as well. But, uh, yeah, we're going to need a fuel tank. We're going to need a... Uh, we're going to need a methane station as well. Uh, we've got... Uh, we're running out of time today. It is now quarter to seven in the evening. And we are working our way through this field as quickly as we can. As you can see, it's a small roller and a decent sized field. This is why I want to turn this into a uh, a vineyard or a, a, a set of vines because it is a decent sized field and, uh, and it will do us very well for this purpose. So, yeah, uh, it just takes a little while with a piece of kit this big to, to get it done. I think next time is very much going to be concentrating on getting the vines done. I think we're going to end up uh, planting this field next time. We have one final month uh, in May to get these planted. So we're going to get these planted next, uh, next time. Uh, we will also get our other vines cultivated and mulched. Although not in that order. We'll mulch it first and then cultivate it. And, uh, yeah, we should end up with our vineyards looking pretty good. And then in the summer, we'll be able to raise some money by doing some grass contracts, I think. And we will also get our other two sets of vines, our other two fields of vines. Uh, we'll get them fertilized too. And, uh, and that will mean as we go into the autumn... We should get, hopefully, a good load of grapes. We will make them... I'm tempted to make them into raisins, uh, but we'll uh, we'll see what the prices are like going towards the end of the year, and, uh, and we can then go from there. It's gone 8 p.m. in the evening, and we're still at it, and the snow is beginning to fall. I'm hoping we don't get a... Uh, a settling of snow because that would make it very very difficult for us to plant our uh, grapevines next time uh, there's still a decent amount of field to go so we're just going to keep plodding away at this and uh, and hopefully it should get done soon uh, we'll see whether this settles or not I'm hoping it's warm enough that it won't last row to be rolled I 
I think we missed a tiny patch up the top end of the uh, field. But otherwise, uh, that's all good. It is way too dark now to be planting the grapevine. Uh, we, we're going to have to leave them uh, for today and hope that this snow does not settle. Because if this snow settles, uh, we are going to be in trouble. It's a few patches just driving up this field. If we have a look at the map, we can have a closer look at this. Yeah, we've got a, a patch up there and a couple of patches at the edge. I'm not so worried about the patches at the edge, uh, but I'd very much like to get the patch further up this field sorted um but yeah we've at least got this field cut and uh tethered and uh, baled and rolled which means that it is absolutely ready for our grapevines to go in as long as this snow holds off as long as we're able to actually get the vines in we should be good so uh yeah let's take this back to the shed and we'll park it up because it is late there we go perfect and with that next time we're going to be trying to get these grapevines in uh we will sort out the chickens and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have a good end to the spring and into the summer. For now, though, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below, follow on Twitch to watch live and for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.